This video has been sponsored by Hey Gears Ultra Craft Reflex. For today's project video, we're going to be 3D printing the Project Tofu 86 from Black Box STL and using the Ultra Craft system to fully 3D print it, clean it up, cure it, and have a model kit to build. Thanks to the perforated build platform, it's easier to remove the models from the build platform and also bubbles can escape really easily through all of those perforated holes so that they don't stick into the resin and affect the final printing results. Hagear's Ultracraft Reflex provides a one-stop production platform to ensure the quality of final prints, fully interconnected print strategies and workflow from print to wash to cure. No additional parameter adjustments are required, so you don't have to fiddle around with the settings yourself. More efficient printing processes for beginners to make it a lot more beginner friendly auto-adjusted printed strategies based on the print results and requirements, and a guaranteed printing success rate. Before the printing of the project can start, the setup of the printers needs to be done first, and that is really simple. Just put in the resin, load the files, and start printing. All of the slicing can be done in their slicer, simply just select the files, add all of the supports you want, export them to the correct layer height, and you're set to go. At the time of printing and filming this video, their settings were only available at 0.05 millimeters, but once the final production version of this printer comes out, they will also have the 0.025. So that is half of the layer height, making it a lot finer of a print, smoother details, and even less layer lines or more layer lines, but less thickness to the layer lines. So that is just a couple of things to take notice. This one is printed at 0.05 due to this being a pre-production sample. First of all, I printed the biggest part and the most important one for this build, and that is the body. Printing it at 0.05 takes about eight or nine hours for a fully completed build. For a fully completed print, you then simply just take it off of the build plate or take the entire build plate out and wash it in the washing machine. This one is a bit different to the ones you might have seen previously on the channel. Instead of a rotating spindle on the bottom, this actual entire mechanism just shakes it around and is really thoroughly cleaning all of the parts. And then you simply just put it on top of the empty container after the cleaning has been completed to drain out all of the excess alcohol and get a nice clean part so you don't have to put your hands into all of the alcohol to fish it out. I simply just let the parts air dry and once dry I can start removing all of the supports. Now the parts are not fully and finally cured yet so it's still nice and flexible and all of the supports can be removed at this stage a lot easier than if you fully cure the parts but that might be personal preference. With the parts still a bit pliable it's a lot easier to bend and pull them into uh, some shapes that it probably wouldn't want to be in if fully cured. So that makes it a lot easier for me to remove all of these supports. With the main body now completed, the printing and cleaning process was repeated for all of the other parts. And as you can see, it is still nice and flexible right here, which again makes it a lot easier to remove the parts off of the supports. For the cleanest results in removing these supports, you could use some side cutters to cut every single support off or just simply rip the parts off and the supports will release but they will leave a little bit more damage and a little bit more cleanup but it saves you a ton of time and it's a lot more accessible in this way for the parts to be removed and not have to pinch them all with a side cutter. After removing all of them from the supports and from the base plates you can put them into the curing machine and have them fully cured. Now there are different options for this curing machine and the different types of resin. You can also bake some of the parts at a higher temperature as this is sort of an oven as well. Uh, that makes the properties of the prints a lot stronger or the mechanical properties and have a more strong or uh, resistant part in the end. But for most normal resins, just curing it at room temperature for a couple of minutes is more than enough. For this specific print, I decided to go with their design resin. This is the PAM 10, and I decided just to use the white one. This is their base color. You can also use uh, different colors mixed in to get different colors of resin, but just the white one was good enough for me, as the main body will be painted in white as well. So after just cleaning up some of the supports on the inside with a bit of a sanding tool and just uh, generally sanding all of the other small print marks left, and also the layer lines, I went for a first coat of primer. 
Now, like I said before, and I want to make this very clear, this is a pre-production prototype of this printer. And at this point in time, the only layer height available was 0.05. Now, normally on scale modeling parts or very small detailed parts, that is a little bit high uh, and thick as far as printing layers go. But with the final version of this printer becoming available uh, very soon, they will also have 0.025. So that is half the layer height, making it a lot finer and a lot more detailed and smooth. However, that being said, the 0.05 on this printer is already incredibly impressive with all of the software and tweaks they've put into it, leaving very thin layer lines, thinner than the ones that I've seen on other printers at the same height, so to speak, and it's very easy to just sand and remove them. So even though the version tested at 0.05 is already pretty impressive, I can't wait to see how good the prints will look with the 0.025 once that becomes available. So the first round of sanding with 400 grit had been completed, a layer of primer has been added, and then I checked over my parts to see if I missed any spots or some spots that simply just needed a bit more sanding. That was then completed as well, again with 400 grit, before I could move on to the final and second coat of primer in order to finish that off fully before I started applying the white base coat. A couple coats of white later and about 24 hours of cure time have passed and I could then move on to masking it off in order to paint all of the black. Now, as you might have seen on the images from Black Box already, this is pretty much a modern or futuristic interpretation of the classic Toyota AE86. Now the one that I'm trying to copy a little bit loosely, so to speak, is the one used in the initial D comics. And therefore I'm just going for a white body with the black accents and then a sort of red brownish on the interior for some of the highlights. With a couple of coats of black now applied to all of the parts, the parts could then be unmasked and moved back into the spray booth for a final coat of 2K clear. Now on the rear bumper, I kind of made a judgment mistake and I should have painted the lower half in the same black in order to have that in a gloss black finish as well. But for some strange reason, I probably had a little bit of a brain fart. I figured that needed to be a matte black to match the front lip on the lower front bumper. Now, both of those parts would have probably looked a lot better in a gloss black to match the parts on the side and the uh, small inserts on the rear and front bumpers. But for some reason, again, no idea why, I decided to do them in a flat black and not in a gloss black. Now, nonetheless, the design still looks pretty much the same. The only difference is the finishing and uh, a bit of the detailing, so to speak. In the meantime, the body is now curing and I can move on to the interior and the chassis for those parts to all get sanded and painted. And just to check that these parts, even after curing, are still nice and flexible and don't tend to break is really cool to see as that makes it a lot easier to handle the parts without the risk of breaking them or damaging them in the process. So all of those parts, just like the body, were sanded first with a 400 grid then moved into the spray booth for some primer and then various colors to be applied on top of them. Most of these parts are very simple yet nicely detailed by Black Box and therefore they didn't really need all that much extra work so one coat of color was applied with the airbrush and some additional details were added with a small brush, some silver and some black paints here and there before I could then move on to the assembly. Now just a small notice, I'm not going for a fully detailed build overboard just more of a simple uh, process to test the printer, put that through its paces and see what it is capable of with minimal work and still have a really nice end result. So all of the parts were glued together with some Bob Smith Industries Super Gold Plus and then I could move on to some additional details on the body. Now as I said in the beginning of this video, it is pretty much a fully 3D printed kit but the only thing 3D printers don't really do all that well is super thin and clear parts. Now there is a clear resin available from Ultracraft as well and that does work really well but that is more for a bit of a thicker part like a headlight or a tail light lens and not for clear parts as windows and so forth. Now luckily Black Box took this into account when designing this kit and made it really easy to template your own clear parts simply just putting a piece of tape on the inside marking it off then moving that onto some uh, clear plastic sheet I decided to add some black outlining as well, so that was traced and cut out too. 
then paint it on with the airbrush. And while I still have the black paint in the airbrush, the hood and also some other trim pieces were painted flat black on the body. A couple coats, some unmasking, and a couple of hours of cure time later, and all of the clear parts and other parts could be glued in place. The final bits and pieces were now glued onto the body and I could move on to the panel lines. Now, full disclosure, this is probably my mistake and I'm not really sure if it looks all that well in the end, but I should have scribed these out a little bit before painting. Now they are pretty nice and deep already, but just a little bit too wide and after painting with the white, they kind of disappeared without any paint of sorts in them and I went over them with a black panel line and now they look a little bit dark and not all that perfect. But in the end, it kind of suits the comic book styling that I was going after for this build. So I'm a little bit torn if this was a good decision or that I should have done it before painting to have them a little bit deeper. So that's it for this project. I hope you enjoyed it. Do let me know down in the comments below what you think of it. And also a very special thank you to Hey Gears for sponsoring this video and helping the channel out with some financial support to keep these videos free for you guys. The links to Blackbox will also be in the description down below, so please do check all of those out. 